Welcome back, my dear friends. How are you? My name is Emmy. My husband is Paul, and this is the channel Frugal Money Saver. Today, I want to elaborate a little bit on some food storage, stocking up, using up what we have ideas. The winter is coming. I touched upon it briefly in my last haul, but I just wanted to elaborate a little bit more today. And I also wanted to share with you two made from scratch recipes that we normally would buy um, in a processed form. So if this sounds interesting to you, stick around. If you are new here, I ask that you click that little subscribe button and become part of our family. And by all means, I hope you enjoy this video and give it a big thumbs up. So let's start. Um, first, let's look at the refrigerator and I wanna go over a couple of things about the refrigerator. I have what is called, in my own mind and in Paul's mind, we need to use it up shelf. That are things that will go bad uh, if they get shoved to the back of the refrigerator. Now I haven't gone food shopping, so there's not a heck of a lot here, but I have got some strawberries that I know I have to use up pretty quickly. I've got a head of Escadol that I know I have to cook. There's three apples in here that got shoved in the back and I forgot they were there, exactly what I'm saying. I've got a half a lemon I have to use. So I designate this bottom shelf Two, let's use it up. And I encourage you to do the same because so many times when our refrigerator is full, things get pushed in the back and then they go bad. So just a little tip that I think will really save you some money. Have a shelf just designated for things that have to be used up. Now, another tip I wanna give you is that when you are stocking your pantry, don't stock it with things that you don't like. In other words, um, everybody says, well, you should have tons of beans in the house. But if you don't like beans, that is not going to be something that you want if you can't get out of your house to have to eat. You know, <laughs> that doesn't make sense. You're not gonna enjoy it. You're, you're you know, okay, it may be a shelf stable product, but if it's not something you like, don't stock up on it. Um, go for canned tuna, canned meats. Um, if you do like beans, that's great. Pasta, make sure you have extra flour that you put away properly so it doesn't you know, go bad, you can freeze it. Um, rice, these are other uh, long shelf life items. Have some cocoa powder, things like this so that you're able to bake from scratch. Um, if you eat canned soups, some canned soups, just things to have in the house if we are unable to get to the store with the coming winter months or for whatever reason we're unable to. And again, like I told you on my last haul, pick up this stuff when they are on Lost Leaders. If you see canned tuna for a dollar, a dollar twenty-five a can and you love tuna, pick up a couple cans. But again, what you're going to want to do is rotate your stock in your pantries. The new ones coming in, if they have a later date than the ones in there, move them to the back, pull up the earliest expiration dates to the front. I know this probably sounds like common sense, but just a little gentle reminder. You wanna keep rotating your dry goods. Some other things that you can stock up on, oatmeal, cereal, things like that, crackers. Those kind of things have a pretty long shelf life too. This is just a little prep talk for, like I said, the coming months. The two recipes coming up. One, I'm going to be replacing a can of creamed soup with a homemade version. And the other is we're going to make a very simple chocolate snack cake from scratch. I hear all the time, non-processed food is expensive. Yes, it tends to be a little bit more, I'm not gonna lie to you, but the quality of the ingredients you're getting and the taste, everything about it is just so much better. And believe me, there is not that much price difference from a can of cream soup, look at the label, and making creamed soup 
from scratch for a recipe. Same thing goes with a cake mix. So let me share these two recipes with you. I think you'll enjoy them. They're super frugal and super yummy. Really, the cake is over the top. So here you go, enjoy. I am making a crock pot smothered London broil today. So I've got about a pound and a half piece of London broil. And London broil is an inexpensive cut of meat when it goes on sale. So I usually buy them and put them in the freezer. It can be a very tough piece of meat though. But I'm gonna try a new recipe and you know, you and I always try our new recipes together. So this one is like a smothered steak and you put it in the crock pot, but it called for a can of cream of celery soup. Actually, it called for cream of mushroom, but those of you who know us know that my husband will not go within 10 feet of a mushroom. So, Emmy is going to make some homemade cream of celery soup. Sure, you have seen my hauls. If you haven't, you can check them out. I don't buy canned soup. I am going to make my own today. It's super easy, it tastes super delicious, um, and it's so much better for you, please. I know for convenience sake, those canned soups are great, but if you have a little extra time, this is a great way to go if you could give it a try. So right here, I have three tablespoons of melted butter. To that, I am adding a half a chopped onion, a whole stalk of chopped celery, and a clove of garlic just cut into like five pieces. Oh, and I am just going to cook that until softened, about five minutes. That's been cooking for approximately five minutes. You can see the onions are soft. Now what I'm going to do is add three tablespoons of flour. So basically what I'm gonna be doing is almost making a white sauce. And this works so well in place of a canned cream soup. Just cook this for about a minute, stirring constantly over medium low heat. Now to this, I'm gonna add three quarters of a cup of milk. I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of water and I am just going to whisk that now. I've been whisking this for several minutes and you can see how nice and thick that has become, which is exactly what we wanted. And now I'm just going to give it a little bit of seasoning. I'm going to add a little bit of cracked pepper. I am going to add a little salt because you're going to need that for the meat. Just a little bit. And then I'm also going to use a little bit of paprika. That's all there is to it. You have a can now of homemade cream of celery soup without all the extra sodium. You could have left the sodium out completely, but I did add a little for flavor. Now you taste it, see if it's good to you, and then I'll show you exactly what we're gonna do with it. But it is a perfect consistency now. I have about a pound and a half of a piece of London broil in here, and I put a half a cup of water in. Now what I'm going to do is take that soup our homemade soup, and I'm gonna pour it right over the meat. And this is gonna cook down. This is going to make an amazing broth that we're gonna either put over root noodles or maybe rice, and that's how easy it is. So I'm going to cover this low for maybe six and check it around that time period, and we'll see how it's doing. And that's it. The gravy looks absolutely delicious. It did exactly what I wanted it to do. Um, I just, <laughs> the meat shrunk a little bit and the problem is the meat seems tough. Now again, I used uh, what was called the London broil, a half of one. Um, I'm going to have Paul slice it 
and then we will add it back to the gravy here and we will see. Well, the meat is slicing. Paul's doing it super thin. So we are going to slice this and add it back to um, the gravy and we'll let you know how it is with the gravy. So we just added the meat back into the gravy and we're mixing this. We are gonna be putting it over some mashed potatoes, but I would think you could do it over mashed potatoes, you could do it over noodles, you could do it over rice. I think the real winner in this recipe though is this gravy. I just tasted it and it is out of this world and we did not use a canned soup. So I would think this could be used with a regular top round roast or even a bottom round roast that you just slow cook, but we had the London broil. So we used it and I'm sure it's gonna be absolutely delicious. You use what you have. So this is a super simple snack cake recipe for like when you just want something quick and easy, one bowl and it is rich, chocolatey and it doesn't even need icing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is sift my dry ingredients. So I need one and three quarter, that's one cup, and a half, and then a quarter. And that's regular all-purpose flour. And to that, I am going to add a quarter cup of cocoa. And I'm gonna sift this down a little bit. I do this because the cocoa is lumpy. Okay, that's good. Just wanted to get it down a little bit so I can add the rest of the dry ingredients. I need a teaspoon of baking soda. I need a teaspoon of baking powder, about a half a teaspoon of salt. Okay, and I'm going to finish whisking this together. See all those little lumps on the bottom? That's what we don't want. So we're gonna push that right through our strainer. Cocoa tends to do that. So we wanna make sure that doesn't happen. We'll end up with a bite of just dry cocoa in a, in a bite of cake. It called for a cup of brown sugar, but I put in about three quarters. A cup seemed like a lot to me, but I will post the original recipe down below. You know me, I'm always mixing things up. We need a third cup oil, one egg, one cup of water. It said you could use water or milk, but I'm gonna use water. Let's see how it comes out. We also have to add one teaspoon of vinegar. So I think that's what's gonna give the cake its nice rise. And one teaspoon of vanilla. Super easy. So I'm gonna just mix this and I'll be back in a second. Make sure you stop, scrape down the sides. We don't want to over mix this too much. We want to keep this just to incorporate. I'm going to scrape down the sides. There we go. That looks good. Really good. And now I'm just going to put it in a greased 8x8 pan. I got my butter wrapper from the fridge. Never throw those butter wrappers away. They're great for greasing pans. And I'm just putting this in. What's neat about this recipe, it's customizable. You want to add chocolate chips. You want to add nuts. You want to add raisins. Whatever you'd like to add to it, go right ahead. But what I would do is add it at the end. Now what I'm going to do now is just sprinkle it with some chocolate chips so we don't even have to ice it. Take some mini chocolate chips and just put it on top. And these will bake right in and that kind of makes it so you don't even have to put an icing on it. It'll have a nice little chocolate bite when you first taste it. And I buy the majority of my baking chips and things like that 
over the holidays from November, December, and I get them and I put them away because you don't want to be buying baking supplies in the middle of summer. They are extremely expensive. So I am going to put this in a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes and we'll check it to see if it's done. Simple snack cake. It was supposed to cook 30 to 35 minutes. Uh, mine actually took 36 minutes but it is perfectly clean now. You can ice it if you want. I put the chocolate chips, which is perfect. Serve it with a little ice cream, a little whipped cream, or just plain like this with some powdered sugar. So perfect, easy snack cake. So what I would tell you about the crock pot smothered London broil is the gravy is out of this world. I would have added some carrots and potatoes if I had known. I think that would have been a wonderful complete meal. The London broil was very good but I definitely would have used a fattier cut of meat for sure like a top round roast even a bottom round roast I think would have been just a bit more tender definitely and as far as that cake there is nothing I would change about that and do you see how easy it is to switch out a box cake mix, sure, may be a dollar, and it's convenient and quick, but you have to remember, you're still adding oil, you're still usually adding three eggs, and you're adding water. So there is a process to that as well, but this is such a better taste, better quality, everything about it. And these are usually ingredients you have on hand. That's the other tip. Keep these ingredients on hand. You know, look at the ingredients on a box cake mix and then look what we just made. So try to switch it up. Keep these things in your pantry. The cream soup recipe, how easy is that? You could make cream of mushroom, switch out the celery for mushrooms. You could make cream of chicken. Instead of the water, add some chicken broth and some cut up chicken. You can make any kind of cream soup you want and you saw how it adapted to the recipe. It's the same thing you get in a can. So I will link both those recipes down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was encouraging. The other thing I wanna ask you is, we were over on the community board, Paul and I, and we asked the question if you all wanted to see us do a Q&A on frugal living, whatever it may be pertaining to our frugal lifestyle. And I think like 96% of you, and there were a lot of you who voted, so thank you, said yes, we'd love to see that. So start getting your comments in. Um, either put them in the comments section down below or head over to the community board where I posted the question. You can leave them there. So thank you. I am so glad you spent this time with us. We love you. We wish you blessings. Give this a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. And until our next video, bye-bye.